Today I am doing a compare of all three 24 inch pen displays available today. We're going to do a quick comparison of all the specs to give you the most detailed information you can have to make an informed decision about what's best for you. We're going to go over that in just a minute. I ain't getting out of bed today. I keep waking up from the previous night. Now I'm John. I just spent all day racing about with that nutty eye doctor to get a pair of these speckles. So I can see. But I'm not doing that. I do reviews and tutorials that help with things in the creative process. Now remember who you were supposed to be by hitting that sub, clicking that bell, dropping a like, and dropping a comment so you won't miss anything. Okay, we're going to pay the bills here first going over what's similar. All three displays are 23.8 inches diagonally. They're all electromagnetic resonance. That's EMR for short. The most accurate and best pen display experience, in my opinion. Panel type is IPS, and the contrast ratio for all three is 1,000 to 1. The resolution is where we see our first difference with Huion and XP Pen coming in at 1440p or QHD, while the Wacom bumps up to 4K, otherwise known as 2160p. Huion and XP Pen come in at 16.7 million displayable colors, while Wacom claims 1.06 billion displayable colors are available. Color gamut is measured a little differently here with Huion coming in at 120% sRGB, XP Pen and Wacom both list the Adobe gamut at 90% RGB for XP Pen and 99% RGB for Wacom. Your physical express keys are about the same between Huion and XP Pen, although Huion features two adjustable sliders, while XP Pen features two adjustable red dials. Now on the XP Pen side, the dials are able to be adjusted independently, while the Huion sliders are mirrored. Finally, on Wacom's side, they come with the Express Key Remote, which features 17 shortcut keys. I've done a video review and tutorial for that device. I will link it below. And Touch is available on the Wacom, but it's an additional cost. All right, I've talked about this PPI pixels per inch before. It's basically why your phone looks so clear. It's because they pack a bazillion pixels inside that small screen. Same applies to your pen display. Just to give you an idea, this screen size of 1080p would come in at about 92.56 pixels per inch. At 1440p, we see it get bumped up to 109.08 pixels per inch. Now, that's a significant increase. At 4K or 2160p, we see 185.12 pixels per inch. That basically means, as opposed to 1080p, when you're zooming in, you're not going to see those pixels. At 4K, the screen is going to look a little clearer. Huion and Wacom both feature anti-glare etched glass, which means there's a bit of texture to it. This is, of course, opposed to just a matte screen overlay, which is featured on the XP Pen. Same applies to fully laminated. The fully laminated is a bit different. This is end-to-end -end bonded glass, which reduces the distance between the pen tip and the digitizer. This minimizes a negative effect called parallax, which is a cursor offset from the pen tip caused by that gap I mentioned. Real world test, honestly, not that different. The Huion and XP Pen actually match up pretty closely and both exhibit similar amounts of EMR lag. That's just where the cursor drags behind the pen tip. The Cintiq is the best in those two categories, but in my opinion, not life-changing. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna read all of this. You can pause the screen, but this is basically what's included in the box for all three displays. Now the good news is, all three companies give you everything you need, including all cables for most of the inputs. We're gonna cover that in a second. All three pens are battery free and feature 8,192 pressure levels. Tilt to support it is 60 degrees and really the only spec that's different is the PPS or RPS report rate. The Huion featuring the highest of the three at 266. Speaking of the PW517, the pen features two programmable buttons, no eraser on the back, and a rubberized grip. It's got a fairly stiff nib, but a little bit of a give to it. In addition, the pen's got a sharp taper from the thickness of the barrel all the way to the back. Once you crack open the donut, you have your spare nibs and nib remover inside. Next up, the XP Pen PA2. Again, similar specs. No eraser on the back, dual programmable buttons, rubberized grip, and a stiffer nib along the top. The stiffer the nib, the harder it's going to feel against the glass. The top of the cylinder pen holder, you drop the pen in there. And when you unscrew the back, you have your spare nibs and your nib hole remover in the center. The Wacom Pro Pen is the gold standard in digital pens as far as I'm concerned. It's got two programmable buttons, a rubberized grip, and features an eraser in the back. It also has the stiffest nib of the group. Now the pen holder is hefty. You crack it open, you have your spare nibs inside, 
and the nib remover hole of the metal back, which is intended to magnetically stick to the Cintiq itself, but honestly, it's too heavy, it slides. The Huion pen is the longest of the three, while the Wacom and XP pen are just about the same length. They're all basically the same weight. The Wacom is probably the heaviest out of the three. It's worth mentioning that Wacom does offer two optional pens, again, purchased separately, the 3D Pro Pen and the Pro Pen Slim. I've got videos for both of these guys. I'll link them down below. And finally, in addition to the pen holders, Wacom and XP Pen also include pen clips that clip directly to the display to hold your pen. What do you mean? I'm adding more glasses to make it more better. It's a matter of grammar arithmetic. Hold on, let me show you. Can't see. Better? More better. What about those ones you got on? Come on, stop fooling around, hand them over. Where'd you get these from, Mr. Magoo? Okay, ruler test. We're gonna go really quick through all three just to see how everything turns out. Starting first with Huyan. I did three slow lines for each test. Again, you could check the individual reviews, but the Huyan produces results I saw from the last time. The lines have a tiny bit of wobble, but it's really not bad at all. XP pen, since the last time I tested it, they have updated their driver. So I was curious to see if there'd be any changes. Fortunately, there isn't much changes. I would say this probably has the most wobble of the three, but it's really close. And last but not least, we have the Cintiq. Now the Cintiq is the best of the three, although it's not perfect. And this is why I don't really like these rule tests. I mean, this is a Cintiq, this tiny bit of wobble in those lines. The reason, it's the size of these displays. When you look at the smaller versions of all these guys, there's no line wobble. But when you get this big with the glass and just the size of the digitizer, it just comes down to physics. You can't get away from it. Now when it comes to stands, Huyan includes a very familiar stand we've seen before. You pop the little switch up, and it gives you multiple angles almost down to flat. It attaches via the four VESA mount screws in the back, and it can and you should probably attach this to an Orgatron arm. Now XP Pen, as far as functionality, pretty similar. The stand they include is a bit more robust, and the switch kind of locks everything into place. Once again, it uses the four VESA mount screws in the back to attach, but in both cases, I would use an arm. That's not to say both stands aren't functionally, they fully are. It's just with a display this size, you're going to be leaning forward, which is really not good posture if you're going to be working all day. Still, you got to give both companies credit for at least including a stand. The Cintiq only comes out with a pair of kickout legs, that's not going to work. At launch, they had the Wacom stand, which was very expensive and needed a lot of desk space. After a bunch of whining from people like me, they released the VESA mount adapter. And then a little later on, their own Ergotron arm with the same or similar VESA mount adapter. Now, I don't like proprietary things, so for my money, the VESA mount adapter with your own arm was the way to go. Anyway, I keep pushing the arm because if you try to lean over this thing and work all day, you're basically not going to have a neck. And your back will be obliterated into like a million pieces. Okay, inputs is where these devices start to separate themselves a little bit. So, starting with the Huyan, you have display port at the top, HDMI, VGA, those are all video outputs, power, and then USB-CA. Moving over to XP Pen, they do something a little bit differently here. They give you two USB-A ports, but they can charge devices, accept mass storage, and etc. We've got HDMI out for video, as well as USB-C out for video and data, depending on your host computer. Finally, we have power. Now, even though the device has USB-C, you will still need at a minimum two cables. So if you have USB-C on a MacBook, etc. You can use the USB-C for video and data, but you're still gonna need that power. Now Wacom basically gives you everything on the back of the machine. Now I like to keep it open, which is why I never put the backing back on. Okay, that's a lie. I didn't realize once you put the VESA mount on that I wouldn't be able to get the back on after it, but whatever. You've got DisplayPort and HDMI out. You've got USB-A in the corner for the Express Key Remote dongle. You've got a USB 3 port for data, a couple of wire ties in the middle, and then on the right, you do have a USB-C port. The same rules for USB-C apply here as well. You're still gonna need power. Now here's a quick clip of everything tied together just to give you an idea how it looks. And finally on the Cintiq, again, I'm cheating again here with a picture. On each side, you have two 
USB 3.0 ports. One comes in real handy for charging your Express Key remote. On the left, you do have a headphone jack, which comes in handy and is fantastic. And on the right side, you have a card reader. Now the button options are a little bit different compared to the brand you're dealing with, with Huion going with the physical buttons and XP Pen and Wacom both going with touch sensitive buttons. Wacom obviously giving you more options in the touch controls by letting you get to certain menus and certain things that you can tune from right inside the display. However, if you're a button nut, there might be some button preferences here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Excellent. No, the stairs are all right. You can see just fine. Just turn the light on. Uh, I'll have a hot pocket. No, none of that four cheese pizza. Give me the meatball ones, the good ones. You know, with the garlic crust. Should I get it myself then? Okay, line quality test. We start with our light to dark wiggly line. We're looking for a gradient between light, medium, and hard strokes. And finally, a consistent taper at the end. The Huyan does well here. I'd had no problems and I was happy with the results. Next up, another example of light, medium, and hard strokes. This time, three sets of straight diagonal lines, light, medium, and hard. This is to verify what we think we saw before. Once again, the Huyan shows nice gradients. We switch to the pen tool here to do long diagonal strokes to ensure we have consistent pen pressure. And I measure this by the beginning of the taper and the end of the taper to make sure there's no jitter or shoelace effects. We look pretty good here. Next we test an EMR lag and how the cursor keeps up with the pen tip. We do this with cross hatching. Within this test I didn't have any problem. Again EMR lag is something we live with. All three of these displays exhibit this known system. We do three quarter ellipses starting out light and ending with hard strokes to ensure we have consistent pen pressure similar to the test we did earlier. This is a little bit different and tends to show problems if there are any in the pen pressure experience. Finally, we're gonna test the tilt. I use the same brush and Clip Studio paint made by a guy named Frendon. Now what I'm doing here is I'm measuring to see if the cursor jumps when I tilt the pen. That used to be a big problem when these pen displays first started coming out with tilt. I don't notice it much being a problem now. It's also hard to do and hold the pen straight at the same time. And that's really what you're seeing moving around on the screen. XP pen is up next. We're gonna move a little quicker here. Same squiggly line, very similar results. Light, medium, and dark. All gradients show up pretty good. Our taper at the end, no issues. Our second gradient test. Once again, validating those results we just saw. Now we'll move to those long pen test strokes. Again, good drawing experience. I'd have to say the Huyan and XP pen so far are pretty even. Cross hatching on the XP pen, very responsive, no issues. The pen cursor is where I expect it to be. Our ellipse test, pretty good. You can definitely see where I start out light and I end up thick. And I'm not seeing any kind of shoelace effect at the end of these lines. This leads us into the tilt test. Remember we're using the same pencil each time. There's no fooling around here in these tests. You can see not only does the cursor really not jump around at all, but I get a nice shade when I tilt the pencil. This is exactly what you're looking for out of a tilt test. The Cintiq now for all of you guys that are still awake. We're going to see a little bit more precision here with the Cintiq. In other words, what I noticed is the light line comes up lighter, but the end of the line, the initial activation force tends to not be as heavy towards the end as the other two displays. Moving to the line test, we have all three layers of gradient that we're looking for. Same when moving to the pen tool. I wasn't expecting any kind of shoelace effect or any kind of jitter with the Cintiq, but again, I did notice towards the end of those lines, I had to press harder on the Cintiq than on the other two. Just know pressure sensitivity is adjustable, and I'm using all the same settings for the purpose of testing. 
I did mention earlier, EMR lag on the Cintiq was a bit better than the other two. Now, it wasn't life-changing, but for those of you people who are really looking for precision, have to have it, that's a use case for the Cintiq over the other two. Our ellipses here are perfect. I have full control of the pen, and this is why I talk about the Pro Pen in such high regard. Just to keep things fair, we're gonna do our tilt test. Same pencil, Clip Studio. The tilt is beautiful. Not that I would have expected anything less, but I do notice the tilt to be just a little bit more accurate as far as the cursor not moving around with the Cintiq. Speaking of touch, if you choose, just a really quick demonstration of how the touch works on the Cintiq. Some people have claimed it's a little janky. I really don't have any problem with it. The trick is, is to really set your fingers and, and control that motion. Now the last thing on the Cintiq I'm gonna mention they're much further ahead as far as things built into the driver for things such as workflow. Included radial dials and panels and additional menus you can link to. It's an almost unlimited amount of options. I did a complete video on this. I'll link it up above. Okay, let's talk about some use cases here. Obviously, if you are a person who needs 4K or touch, you really only have one option. In addition, if you are a person who experiences buyer's remorse, in other words, if you believe you're compromising, aka not getting a Cintiq for another brand, despite the small differences, I would recommend and just go ahead and get the Cintiq and be done with it. Especially if you have the budget. Believe me, life is too short. Next, if you're looking for a really good pen experience with etched glass and a bonded laminated display, you're really looking at the Huion. The sliders on the Express keys are also a difference as opposed to the dials that come with the XP pen. Conversely, the use case for the XP pen is you like the dials. You like the included stand, which is better than the Huion. And as we've tested over and over, it really is a similar pen experience. Last and favor the XP pen, we have to call out the USB-C for that future proofing you guys might be interested in, or you just want less cables. So even with the pen experience between the Huion and the XP pen being similar, I'm calling out very specific things that might make you lead one way or another. And ending with the very obvious, the Wacom is better in every pen test and in almost every capacity than the Huion at the X-Pen, but obviously there's a major, major price difference. I don't know. This glasses thing I think is maybe more trouble than it's worth, but be that as it may, hopefully I gave you guys enough information to make an informed decision. Doing something like this is hard to really be fair and keep it down the middle, but hopefully I was able to do that. Now, if you like this comparison, why don't you check out the three individual reviews of these models right over here. I'll check you guys out in the next one.